So welcome again in the third part of the vector phase therapy part where I shall be speaking about the acute traumatic wounds, not chronic wound versus the conventional therapy which is being done. And this uh, study was conducted during 2018 to uh, July 2020. And uh, you can see the traumatic wound is great challenge to surgeons as it is large in size, heavily infected and pathetic. So you must have seen the uh, road traffic wounds. And you can see, I shall be showing you a few of the pictures later on. And you will find that you can appreciate that how dreaded these uh, wounds are there. And once the bacteria are getting colonized and, in, and then uh, they go to the chronic uh, stage like biofilm formation, the amount of the very expensive antibiotics and the local as well as the systemic is not going to give any help to us. So that is the problem. Uh, infection may lead to function loss, amputation, chronic wound, septicemia or even death. Majority of the traumatic wound proved to have polymicrobial infection because you know if somebody is lying on the road dust, so dust is having a lot of um, variety of the bacteria and they are usually multi-drug resistance as well sometimes pain drug resistance. So bacterial phase therapy may revolutionize in the treatment of traumatic wound. So let us see that what is the role of the bacterial phase therapy. We conducted another uh, clinical trial uh, as a part of the uh, Master of Surgery thesis with the collaboration of surgery department and I'm showing you the findings. The study we undertook to look into the potential alternative of topical antimicrobial therapy for the treatment of acute infected traumatic wound and a solution to multidrug resistant bacteria. This was a case control study. Patients aged 12 to 60 years with acute traumatic wounds were taken into the study at trauma center of Banaras University. Customized bacteriophages were applied over the wound in case while the series serial debridement and dressing with systemic antibiotics were given in the control. So a total of 20, 54 patients met the clinical criteria, 27 in case group and 27 in control group. Wound swab and tissue biopsy was taken for the wound, uh, from the wound for bacterial isolation. A specific phases, uh, phase was isolated for case group which was applied over the wound on alternate day till the wound becomes sterile and divide up graft eating bacteria. So because you, if, if you have to go the uh, skin grafting, SSG that is called a superficial skin grafting uh, for the large wound only then it heals. So until unless this is sterile, the surface area is sterile, the skin uh, graft will not be accepted by the host. So this is why you have to make the wound surface sterile. So this is one picture where conventional therapy is being given means the cleaning of the wound, debridement with the alcohol and the pyridone iodine and then systemic antibiotics are being given and you can see in this case when we did the culture from this surface after 20, uh, this, you can see this is 2-8-2020, this is 8-8-2020 and this is 21-8-20. There is no sign of healing and we could isolate the same bacteria of the first day to this day also. So the bacteria were all the time. It means if we are, we are not treating, we cannot go for the skin grafting. The skin graft will be rejected. So this is another, another control. You can see this is the sloughing. Cleaning has given some effect. There is healthy cleanation tissue, but you can see again yellow slough dead debris is here. But And here also the, we could isolate the patient after conventional therapy. CT stands for conventional therapy. And you can see here is the case where we started the therapy. You can see this is like degloving injury. Whole wounds skin has been taken away. And then uh, we started the uh, treatment uh, un, uh, as soon as we got the bacteriophages against the isolated bacteria. And we started therapy and you can see this on 6, 9, 18. So you can see this is almost 8, 9 days only healthy granulation tissue has appeared and then by the end of 12 9 you can see uh, this is uh, after 15 days complete healthy tissue is there and this is uh, the, this is fit for the case of ssg superficial skin grafting this will be healing very fast uh, this is another case you can see here we started the therapy 8 5 17 5 may then 21st may and 29th may almost one month or less than a bit less than one month maybe 21 24 days again it has come to the uh, healthy granulation tissue and then we have gone for the 
SSG. You can see the skin graft has been put over the surface and the patient healing process, you can see the skin is coming out uh, at several places. This is third case, rapid shrinking of left below knee amputation wound. This, there was the amputation due to the accident done below knee and this was infected and uh, after the use of the bacteriophage for six days it became sterile and you know without skin grafting the closure occurred spontaneously. So there was no need and uh, the skin grew up like this and there was a complete healing. So this is the beauty of the bacteriophage therapy we got. In conventional therapy it takes very long or sometimes or usually don't heal. So let us see what happened show the effect of showing the effect of the bacteriophage therapy in comparison to conventional therapy cases with the bacteriophage therapy bt is bacteriophage and ct is the conventional therapy this is skin grafting could be done in 74.1 percent of the cases while in conventional therapy only 33.3 percent cases could ssgb could be done otherwise it was not possible to go for this superficial skin grafting wound closure but by second degree or third degree intervention it means primary intention there is very minimal scarring eye fibrous tissue formation but if the closure is occurring by the second degree third degree a lot of fibrous tissue formation contracture of the affected area occurs and it was quite high in the conventional therapy and quite low 18.5 percent in case of uh, bacteriophage therapy so again it was very good here the difference was 0 0.004 uh, it means significantly better than this last follow up 3.7 percent and there was a, the this one case was last in the follow up there was one death due to certain other uh, unrelated region and re intervention in one case we had to do and total the 27 cases were there so uh, full granulation tissue how many days mean days taken by the full granulation tissue formation and you can see uh, the control uh, mean day was this so full granulation tissue in 15 days and while this is in 23 days so the difference is, is 8 days more are there and this difference is significant final intervention we could do on 25th day on an average while this was 43rd day so again there is a huge difference 5 30 10 almost 18 days later this leads to the healing by the secondary intention or third tertiary intention so intervention was done earlier and this difference is again very significant then shows days required to attain complete granulation and sterile wound so sterile wound in case of our study it came uh, by uh, 20 days while in controls just double it was 40 days on an average plus minus five days so again the difference was significant so the fast therapy led led to the healing very fast then here you can see the this is very important i just wanted to show you that what is the effect on not only the quality of healing or the speed of healing the average expenditure in the treatment of both groups you have seen the large large uh, wounds there so if we simply take the antibiotic during non-specific bacteriophage therapy initial four or five days we are giving the bacteriophage therapy because till the this is the time taken by the further development of customized bacteriophages if that is not available in our library so during this time we give the antibiotic therapy uh, and we don't know what bacteria is there that takes time in isolation and sensitivity testing so that cost is around six thousand plus minus three thousand this is the government rate hospital rate average cost charges for dressing alternate day dressing for 12 times plus phage plus person this cost is very uh, cheap it, uh, it is almost 12,000 plus minus 3,000 and then wage losses wage losses of a person who is affected say uh, he is staying there for 400 per day for 25 days so that may be 10,000 rupees and daily expenditure hospital stay of the patient that may be uh, 75 7500 and uh, so this, this is the average uh, the total goes to 38500 plus minus 3000 this is an estimate this is not uh, exact one but you can see the total expenditure comes this by the time the patient is getting cured and he is relieved from the hospital uh, faster means in the just half of the time while in control sorry in control group you can see 
एंटीबायोटिक इज गिवेन फॉर नॉट लेस देन टेन टू फोर्टीन डेज द कास्ट गोज टेन टाइम्स मोर सिक्सटी थाउजेंड एंड यूजली हाई एंड एंटीबायोटिक्स आर गिवेन दे आर से फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड टू टू थाउजेंड पर वायल थ्री वायल्स आर गिवेन एट आवरली इंजेक्शन आर गिवेन फॉर टेन टू फोर्टीन डेज सो दैट बिकम्स वेरी एक्सपेंसिव दिस इज द लेस एस्टिमेट इट मे बी लार्जर एंड प्लस माइनस ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड एवरेज कास्ट चार्जेस फॉर ड्रेसिंग अगेन इट इज क्वाइट हाई फोर्टी फाइव थाउजेंड बिकॉज द ड्यूरेशन इज मोर हियर ओनली इट इज ट्वेल्व टाइम्स इट इज आंटी अनलेस इट इज बिकम स्टराइल सो दिस मे बी फोर्टी फाइव टाइम्स डेली डेली ड्रेसिंग चार्जेस वेज लॉसेस फॉर फोर्टी फाइव डेज दिस गोज टू एटीन थाउजेंड एंड डेली एक्सपेंडिचर ऑफ हॉस्पिटल स्टे से थ्री हंड्रेड पर डे फोर्टी फाइव डेज थर्टीन थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड सो टोटल एक्सपेंडिचर बिकम्स रफली वन लैख थर्टी सिक्स थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड प्लस माइनस ट्वेंटी टू थाउजेंड सो दिस डिफरेंस इज सिग्निफिकेंट एंड यू कैन सी द पेशेंट इज सफरिंग बाई बोथ वे क्वालिटी ऑफ हीलिंग एंड एक्सपेंडिचर एंड क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइफ एज वेल सो दिस इज एंड समटाइम्स बिकॉज ऑफ द फाइब्रोसिस आर नॉन हीलिंग then again you have to go for the some other therapy and if contracture is formed then you have to seek the help of a surgeon or plastic surgeon that becomes additional expenditure to on the part of the patient so we published this paper uh, uh, on, uh, recently i think it is in uh, 2022 you can see in january and uh, still we are waiting for the citations but this is very significant paper and nobody has done in the world literature this type of work and uh, uh, this is a great thing if the uh, government or regulatory body uh, permits us so we can have uh, this technology and for this we need to have the number of laboratory isolating the phages and using at each and every major tertiary level hospitals so what are the challenges emergence of phage resistant bacteria during the therapy toxicity of the phages which i mentioned earlier immune elimination i have mentioned earlier and transfer of harmful genes through transaction and ethical permission to use the phages as a drug so these are the challenges addressing issues related to bacteriophage product manufacturing and characterization the utility of the use of animal studies for the proof of concept phage therapy is unclear at this time so we are trying to have certain evidences so that we can convince the regulatory body in coming days and to design early clinical trials that reliably assess product safety and tolerability are prerequisites for advancing development to trial design to demonstrate effectiveness and assess the clinical benefit so before thanking you one thing very important point i left because uh, there is no uh, one to one interaction Uh, you might be thinking that how easy is to isolate the bacteriophages from the environmental sample so i'd like to tell you since you are the student of zoology and you know that you might be handling with the cell culture cell lines maybe primary cell lines or continuous cell lines human cells so like that we have got the bacterial cell lines the beauty is that without having the malignant transformation these bacteria keep on multiplying you simply have to change the bacterial uh, host but uh, you can have the fresh medium added to this and bacteria will keep on multiplying so what we are doing is that we are making a lawn culture of the bacteria and then we are uh, waiting till the bacteria is coming to the log phage so log phage usually is 4 to 5 hours for most of the gram negative bacteria but certain bacteria like enterococcus faecalis or staph aureus they are having longer um, uh, this doubling time and this may range up to 8 to 10 uh, hours so when the bacteria comes in the log phase what we are doing is that we are collecting the water sample maybe sewer from the pond or from the hospital sewer system or river ganges and then we are treating this water sample 5 to 10 ml with the 1% chloroform few drops only waiting for 10 minutes so, so what chloroform does is that it it dissolves the lipid available in the cell wall and then the bacteria is lies the viruses are coming out and whatever bacteria are there they are all killed so only viruses are there since viruses are pure protein uh, coat structure they don't have the lipid so they are not affected by the this short exposure of the chloroform so we are simply flooding over the solid log phase bacteria and then incubating overnight next day if we are lucky we can get the clear plaques there if the count is very high bacteriophage count if not 
then what we are doing is that we are putting the uh, TMG our normal saline 3 to 5 ml on the 90 mm plate and taking the wash out treating it as a previous sewer water or river water and then again centrifuging removing the debris to collecting the supernatant and to the supernatant we are again adding 1% chloroform waiting for 10 minutes preparing another log phase of the bacterial lawn and pouring here. So it is usually seen that by this time we are able to have the plaque formation after overnight incubation. Now if the plaques are there uh, maybe they are of varying size so uh, then you can have to pick up each and every uh, plaque with the variable shape and size and to propagate them separately to have the purified uh, bacteriophages. The other thing would I would like to tell you that how to purify the bacteria after lysis from the toxins including endotoxins. There are two ways. One is that you are using ultra centrifugation, cesium chloride or the sucrose gradient uh, centrifugation. But we have seen that this is very long and tough process. And sometimes we found that the bacteriophages are distributed in all the layers of the uh, uh, this tube, centrifuge tube. So what we are doing is that we are taking the 20 nanometer membrane um, uh, filters, not filters, rather membrane tubes membrane to, and then we are putting the because the pore size is 20 nanometers and bacteriophages are usually more than 20 nanometers usual 100 to uh, 200 nanometer size so the and outside we are putting the PEG 6000 and also 2.5 percent uh, sodium chloride so outer side becomes hypertonic and the inner side is isotonic so naturally the small molecules smaller than the bacteriophages are going out and we are using the PBS twice just to wash out the bacteriophages again. And so after the end of two, two three washings, we are left with the, uh, say, not milky, rather a bit yellowish uh, color smelling like uh, sewer uh, bacteriophage concentrate and which are usually having very minimal amount of the bacteriophages. And these bacteriophages can easily be used for the further basic studies like electron microscopy or for clinical use as well. So this is the how we do routinely and for the preservation there are if you are just uh, scrapping the bacteria bacterial uh, plaque uh, with the straight wire with, or with the loop and then inoculating in the uh, peptone stab as we do for the bacteria the the virus remains surviving there along with the bacteria because they are in maybe in the lysogenic phase or maybe inside the bacterial cell and then you could, we, we had been able to isolate the live viruses from these stocks after 10 years even. And then the other thing I would like to tell you that you can preserve them in a lifelike form or you can preserve them at minus 80 degrees centigrade. So these are the preservation method and then purified stock should be well characterized. Phages should be with you and uh, you can just isolate the DNA or RNA of the phages and it can be submitted for the whole genome sequencing and we have gotten done whole genome sequencing of many of the viruses at our laboratory. Thank you very much.